All right, guys, so welcome to the very, 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 very most important part about all of this. This is risk management. And why is risk management so important? If you cannot manage risk on your account, you're going to blow account after account and you're going to keep on losing. You have to have a good risk management to succeed in this industry. It's just the way it is, okay? I suggest that you don't risk anything more than 3 to 4% max per trade, okay? To measure how much you can lose per trade in pips, I recommend you go get the Stenu app. It's S-T-I-N-U and it's an app, okay? It's an application for your phones. Get the Stenu app and that's the best way to measure how much you can lose per trade, okay? If you're gonna tell you what lot sizes to use, stuff like that. But, let's say you enter, let's say you enter right here for a buy, okay? You want to always make sure your risk to reward ratio is very good. What does that mean? Okay, I think that um, you know price is going to come to this point. Whatever. I have a 250 pip. See right here. You just said you're going to measure your pips. By the way, guys, you use these, or you could even use this measuring tape and or this ruler, and this is going to tell you how many pips. Use this with the Stenu app. You'll be good. Okay. So from here to here is 300 pips. About almost 300 pips, right? So. 0.01 lot size on 250 pips is $2, no, $25, I'm sorry. So, 0.01, you catch 30 pips, you caught $3, okay, on a 0.01. So this would be $25 gain. But, you always have a tighter stop loss. So that way, let's say right here, you have 80 pip stop loss. So if this hits your stop loss and you're using a 0.01, this hits your stop loss, you're going to lose $8. But if this hits your take profit, you're going to gain $25. You see why that's important. If you hit your stop loss once, and then you hit a take profit once, you're obviously going to be way up. Because look at your take profit number compared to your stop loss. It's very, very important that you always have a good risk to reward ratio. Okay? You should have a single win, a single take profit hit, should eat three of your losses. So yeah, you might have lost one, lost two, lost three, but then you won one trade, take profit hit, and it was triple what your stop losses were, so now you're break even, okay? It's very simple. Another thing is, anytime you're up 20 pips plus, 25 pips plus, even 30 pips plus, you're gonna put your stop loss to break even. Okay, you're always going to put your stop loss to break even. So if this is your take profit, this is your normal stop loss. Once you're about here, you're already going to put your stop loss to break even. So that way if it hits your stop loss, you don't lose nothing. Very important, very critical. If you guys have any questions on this, you guys can always reach out to me on the um, Discord. Okay, Risk to reward ratio is good. And never risk more than 3% of your account. Okay, 0.01. 30 pips, that's going to be $3, okay? Remember that number and then multiply that. So if you do a 0 0.05 and 30 pips on a 0 0.01 is $3, do $3 times 5, okay? $15 on a 30 pip loss on a 0 0.05, okay? It's that simple. Hope you guys learned something from that. Make sure you guys have good risk reward ratios. Do not risk more than 3% of your account and it'll take you forever to blow an account. If you're using 3% risk, you should never blow your account. Because you're going to have to lose 30 times in a row to lose your whole account. It's very simple. Now let's tie this all together. I'll meet you with the next lesson. Okay, guys. Now that you officially know how to trade every single thing such as trends, support resistance, divergences, Fibonacci, all that good stuff, and you've been studying or even if you haven't been studying, this is very important that you pay attention to this part because this is pretty much your time frames. This is what time frames you're going to be looking at when trading these divergences, okay? It's very simple. We're gonna look at the one hour and the four hour, and that's it. Sometimes the 30 minutes, but most likely never, okay? All you wanna do is, you know, make sure you're not messing with the daily, okay? You do wanna check the daily to make sure, let's say, um, for example, let's say you see some divergence, okay? Let's say right here you see some divergence saying to sell. This divergence is bearish, so it's telling you that the market's going to go down. However, let's say you go to the daily, and the daily is showing a huge uptrend that is not pushing down. 
you do not want to take that trade. So it's very important you check the daily to make sure that you're not going against any major trends or channels or anything like that. Check the daily. If you're in a top of a channel, then you don't want to buy on the four hour, the one hour, one hour charts. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important you look at those in confluence with the four hour and the one hour. Other than that, the four hour is what we're looking at. Okay, we want to see what kind of trend we're in. And then maybe we go on the one hour to see if there's any type of you know, bear or bullish hidden divergence to prove that this trend is going to continue. Okay, so we look at the four hour and the one hour when we look through these setups. It's very, very simple. You know, some things might change. You might see support and resistance on the four hour, but the one hour doesn't show that as well. Okay, so those are going to be the two that we use. It's very, very simple, guys. Um, as you can see, the four hour here shows some support. If we go to the one hour, we might see a nice setup being formed there. So let's check it out. Okay, you see, obviously, you still see the support. It just looks like more because each candlestick now is one hour instead of four. So this candlestick was one hour of data. This candlestick is one hour of data, one hour of data. If we switch it to the four hours, then these, each candlestick is four hours of data. So it's going to condense all of this into smaller bars, basically, and, and, and cents. But it's very important that you use both time frames, four hour, one hour, in confluence with each other. And then always check the daily to see what the main movement is. Okay, We're not going to look at the 30 minute very often, if ever, or the 15 minute or the 5 minute. It's very rare that you're going to look at those because those, when the five minute shows divergence, it's not always as accurate on these bigger as these big bigger time frames are. So we use these time frames always. Okay, so when you're back testing and practicing, demo accounting it, make sure you're using the hourly and the four hour. Okay. All right, guys. So this is very important. So pay very close attention and take your notes, especially on this portion. Okay. These are these are amazing things to use when trading. These are called channels. Now, what is a channel, and what is it? You know, what's the difference between a channel and a up or down trend? Very similar to downtrends, price is pretty much hitting the same point over and over again on the trend line, but it's doing it from the top and the bottom. So check this out. If you draw your trend line from there to there, and then again from there to there, what do you see? You see price has now respected the bottom of this channel and the top of this channel. Okay, look at this. Let's see if I can get to my handy dandy brush. So price started here, top of the channel, top of the channel. Okay, bottom, top, bottom, top, middle, top, bottom, bottom, top, broke out of the channel, and now it's gone, right? Very, very important that you can establish channels. This is what a channel looks like. Take a picture. Do what you have to do. This is a channel. Why is this important? Because when we're doing confluences and we're seeing that price has made a double top, which is just resistance, support, but you also see that you're in a channel, it's deadly. It's very, very deadly. Okay? This is important because if you have more than just one confirmation right here telling you to sell, like let's say right here you see some divergence, and then you see right here, oh, you're at the top of a channel, that's two confirmations to sell. You now have a better chance of making a proper trade than you did before. Let me show you a quick little example. We're at the top of a channel here, but what else do we see? If you paid any attention to the last session, look at this. You see some support turning into resistance. So yeah, price is bouncing on this, broke below it, came to retest this prior support, and now it's resistance, but it's also at the top of a channel. You could have easily took that for a sell. Easy. Boom, we could have entered right here, set our uh, take profit to the bottom of this channel, have our stop loss set just outside of the channel. Look at this risk to reward ratio. You're risking 20 pips for 69 pip gain. That is triple your loss in one trade. Very simple, guys. Channels are very, very important, whether they're going up or down. This is a channel. It's respecting the bottoms and the tops of those trend lines. This is a channel, okay? Take notes. Take pictures. It's very simple. And I'll see you in the next area. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and go over support and resistance. This is very, very important, okay? Very important. So pay close attention to this. Take your notes. Do what you got to do. Okay, when I mark my support resistance, I'm going to use this box, this rectangle. Okay, that's what we're going to use. So check this out. 
This is what you call resistance right here. Okay, why is this resistance? The market is resisting the upside here. It, it can't, it just can't do it. It hits this area, comes down, 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 hits this area, comes down. Yes, markets can break this, okay? You will see markets break this a lot and it's normal, but it's about what markets do after they break it. I'm gonna go over that in a minute, okay? But this is resistance. Pretty much look at resistance as a ceiling. This is a ceiling that markets cannot go above. Yes, they can go above, but they rarely will go above it if you know you have a major support or resistance area. Now, when it comes to support, yes, I know you're thinking it. It's the opposite. So this would be a small example of some support. Take my box. Boom. Look at this. This is support, right? Market has broken above this area. And now look, it's using it as a floor and it's gone. Same thing with this support. That is some support, right? And if you were to draw this from here to here, look at that support, whatever it's chilling up here, broke broken below this former support. And now look, it's using it as a ceiling resistance. Support turns into resistance. Resistance turns into support. These things happen all the time in the market. You're going to notice it so much. Okay, so always mark up your support and resistance when trading because you need to be aware of these areas. Okay, they're very simple to find, very simple to find, but they're very, very important. Okay, so see if I can find a couple more examples for you really quick. And they're very obvious. I mean, you'll notice it all the time. Support, I mean, resistance, I'm sorry, resistance. Boom, market could not make it and it fell. Can you trade support and resistance by itself? Yes and no. You can, but it's very risky and you're going to notice that you're only going to make like 50% of the trades are going to go positive. It's, it's very risky. You want to have more than just that, right? But look, support, major support. Look at this. Price cannot break below this. It's using it like the floor. It's chilling on it. It's, this is the floor. This is the actual floor. And if you were to stretch this over to here, you can see Price broke below but came back up and now look, it's using it as a floor. Markets respect support, they, they respect resistance. It's very simple, guys, okay? Market supports, market resistance, take notes, do what you gotta do, but this is very simple stuff. Support, okay? Resistance, very, very easy. Look at this. This is support turning into resistance and then dropping to this support. It's very simple, guys, okay? Take your notes. Rewatch the video, support and resistance, very simple. Use these with trend lines and uh, be